Overbeck staggers out of his house with a canvas bag, still trying to process the last few hours of his life. Everything's a blur, nothing makes sense. And his veins are still pumping with a tingling concoction of anesthesia and adrenaline. Feels like Nam, all over again. One minute you're drifting off to some faraway dreamland, the next you're fighting off the surgeon in a strange, foggy half-nightmare. He remembers seeing the nurse twitching, convulsing, changing. Changing into something he didn't quite understand, and still doesn't, even though they're everywhere. He remembers sensing something was off. Way off. He remembers his gut churning, twisting, fighting against the weight of his eyelids, trying his best to keep them open as bloody hell erupted all around him. He remembers falling to the ground with the nurse, the tray clattering, the knives and tools scattering. He wanted to sleep, just sleep, but he ordered his eyes to stay open and spotted the syringe rolling over the antiseptic floor. He remembers jerking his arm out, grabbing the syringe, and smashing it into his heart. Or was it his arm? Or maybe both? He doesn't remember anymore. Doesn't matter. All that matters is he made it out of that hell alive. He shakes his throbbing head and clambers over a barricade blocking an alley, winds his way through the burning city toward the market. Most of the city has been reduced to shit. Smoke and fumes seep through the streets. The air reeks of burning civilization, burning humanity. He recognizes the smell, brings him back to places he'd rather forget. Emergency sirens keen endlessly over the echoing shrieks of the infected. Flames erupt from the ruins and barricades, making Philly look like a smoldering wasteland of death and destruction. He had read articles about the so-called Green Flu. It had only been a few days, and it already felt like it was bringing us all back to the goddamn Stone Age. This is worse than Nam. Way worse. Philly in chaos and overrun by the infected. It was more than a common flu, no kidding. Dozens of conspiracy theories and now it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. All that matters is surviving. Been here before, many times. He hears someone shout out a curse and spots a young woman clobbering an infected horde by the market entrance with a rake. Impressive. Up and at him, soldier. Mind if I cut in? They slash through the infected until all that's left is writhing flesh and gore. He stares at her. She approaches him. Not bad, old man. Name's Zoe, last woman on Earth. Not really, but it feels like it. She laughs and wipes chunks of putrid flesh off her arm. She reminds him of a kid he knew in Nam. Strong smile and Boku funny, Boku fierce, just like her. Hello? Anyone out there? I need a hand over here. Bill hears the cries for help above the agonizing groans of the infected. He spots a cage in the middle of all the chaos surrounded by the infected. He grabs his rifle and fires, splitting infected heads like watermelons. He approaches the cage with Zoe, where he sees a man covered in blood. Out of the frying pan and into the cage, he laughs to himself. How'd you end up in this shithole of a thing? The man sighs. Quit yapping and get me out. Zoe looks around. Something ain't right about this. She's got good instinct. Bill's feeling the same knot in his belly. The man smashes the cage. Just get me out of here before they come back! Bill lifts the butt of his rifle and smashes the padlock off the latch with a mighty clang. Merry Christmas, kid. The man smirks. I like that one, Gramps, and I ain't a kid. Call me Francis. Francis steps out of the cage, repeating, Merry Christmas, Merry Bloody Christmas. Bill spits over an infected corpse sprawled over the rubble. That's my line. Find your own. Francis's smile grows. No copyright on a line like that. Bill knows what he's doing. They're kind of a pack, 
And this ain't about a line. This is about who's calling the shots. A lot of brass for a civilian. Truth is, no one is really in charge in this shitstorm, and we all gotta take the lead in some way or another, and he's too stupid to understand. He ought to break him now before things get nasty, set him straight. He inches closer to the man. Zoe sighs. Boys, it's just a goddamn line. A sudden clicking sound behind them, and Bill senses they're screwed. They turn to face three men with guns trained on them. Out of the cage and into the blazing goddamn fire. Francis sighs. Shit. Canadians. Bill looks them over. A group of men in makeshift hazmat suits and rifles. We ain't Canadians. Now move! Bill looks to Zoe and Francis and goes sotto voce. They're survivalists. Francis scrunches his face. So, what are you saying? You saying they're worse than Canadians? Bill doesn't know how to respond to this. He fought with Canadians, damn good soldiers. What's your beef with Canadians? Francis shrugs. What is it? An idiot prods Bill into a room with some kind of makeshift electric poker. Watch that thing, Sita. The idiot prods him. We ain't Sita. He pushes Bill into the corner with Francis and Zoe. He sees they got a geek on a computer. They're telling him to hack into the machine, but he's telling him he can't. He's tech savvy, but he ain't no hacker. After a few tries, they push him aside. They call him Boy. He says his name is Lewis, not Boy, and that gets him a gun shoved in his face. Geek has spunk and attitude. The survivalists talk amongst themselves. One of them sits in front of the laptop and hacks his way in. Bill overhears bits and parts. Search the computer for the locations of the safe houses. The flu took hold faster than anyone expected. Those who prepared the safe houses turned before they could use them. These assholes are mapping a path through the city using the safe houses as checkpoints, like the old underground railway. Fitting for Philadelphia. They probably got hundreds of ideas on how they're going to use us. One of them grabs Zoe and has his own idea. Bill jackknifes to her side despite his restraints. Get your filthy mitts off her. The brute inches up to her and she gives him a kick he ain't ever gonna forget. Bill didn't think anyone could scream like that. He stares at Zoe with wide approving eyes. The brute continues to scream something terrible and collapses to his knees holding his gonads. His buddy rushes to his aid, helps the screaming man up, but he looks different. Real different. Something in his eyes, or rather something lacking in his eyes. Shit. Lewis leaps back from the man like he were the plague. Francis panics. Get us out of this! Lewis grabs a knife from the floor and frees Bill as the survivalists turn pale. Screams and yells echo around them as Bill frees Zoe and Lewis frees Francis. They step back. Zoe gasps. What do we do? Bill shrugs and sighs. Nothing we can do for them. An infected suddenly charges Zoe. Francis clubs its head off. Merry Christmas! He looks to Bill for a reaction. Bill shakes his head and seems unimpressed. Find your own line, kid, if you've got the gray matter to do so. Francis scoffs. Lewis adjusts his tie. Francis makes a face and nudges Lewis. Lose the tie. Lose the goddamn tie. Lewis ignores him. Zoe motions for the boys to shut the hell up and follow her. Let's find an island we can rot on and then fight over ties. Bill raises an inspired eyebrow. That sounds like a plan. He actually likes the idea of rotting on an island while the world goes to hell. Kid's right. Grab some gear and let's get out of here. Bill leads the ragtags through a city he doesn't recognize anymore. It's crazy how fast the flu changed everything. Change. It's the one thing that never surprised him. The one constant in his life. Change and surviving in the new normal. But this new normal 
could take some getting used to. Ain't like they're going to tear each other apart, apologize, then be friends again. He stares into the gloom and goes over the last few hours of his life in his mind. He didn't catch anything. They didn't catch anything, and by all accounts, they should have. Then it dawns on him. They're immune. They're asymptomatic, ticking bombs just waiting to spread the flu. I brought the flu to them. Poor bastards. Lewis steps up beside Bill. What now, Pops? Bill contorts his face. Don't call me Pops. Old man, I don't mind, but not Pops. Bill marches on. I tell you what now. Now we find a safe house and get some rest. But not before you punch Francis in the mouth for talking more shit than a sewer. Bill laughs. I'm messing, kid. But I see you getting pissed with all the tie jokes. Don't let him get to you. His way to cope with all this shit. I knew guys like him and Nam. They're just scared to die and distract themselves by messing around with others. But what really gets me is he stole my goddamn line. Lewis laughs. Bill doesn't find it very funny. I know, I know. Imitation is the sincerest form of compliment. But that civilian using my line... That just ain't right. Safe houses are abandoned, but there's still treasure troves of supplies. This beast of a flu hit fast and took no prisoners. Bill sighs and doubts evacuations are still running, counter to Zoe's belief that the government actually still gives a shit. World has gone to hell and the government don't care, but he ain't saying anything. Last thing he'll do is rob them of hope as they creep through the bowels of the fallen city. He liked Zoe's other idea about finding an island to rot on. If you're gonna rot anywhere, an island, any island ain't half a bad idea, especially one with coconuts. But if she wants to hope for the government, she can go right ahead. He ain't gonna take away her hope. Even if he knows enough about the government to know they ain't worth a second thought, let alone a second chance. But he'll shut up for a civilian that still believes in the system. A system that was broken long before the flu spread. Besides, while she hopes for the government, he'll figure something out. He always does. Zoe regards him. There's gotta be more like us. Areas that have to be protected, quarantined. It can't be that all cities are like this. Bill suppresses a cynical remark. There's something in Zoe he respects. She reminds him of someone he used to know. Someone he used to be. Someone who had all kinds of ideas and ideals before he had seen the true face of governments, of humanity. It's nice to see that in her. Real nice. He hopes it lasts and this hell doesn't stamp it out of her. A heavy wind moans dreadfully and carries with it an all too familiar smell. The smell of rot. The smell of filth. The smell of death. The infected. Dozens of them. Maybe hundreds. Bill acts on instinct. Eyes open. Guns ready. Before he can say another word, the infected close in on them. Gunshots clap through the dead city. Heads crack open like rotten, festering melons, and the infected lay strewn all around. One lashes out of the shadows towards Bill. Without hesitation, Francis blows its face off and turns to him. Merry Christmas! Bill sighs deeply. Bastard saved my life and now he's trying to rub it in my face. He gives Francis a stern, grizzled look. All right, the line's yours, now shut the hell up and shoot! Bill curses under his breath and continues to shoot dark silhouettes charging through the deep orange dusk. Damn, I miss this.